to the Audacious Founder Podcast. My name is Melissa Manning. I am your host. So I had a session the other day with a new client and she was this awesome woman. I can't remember where she lives, but she was somebody who has been to the Olympics twice for track and field. Um, she did, I, I already forgot what it's called that she did, but it's some sort of like a triathlon thing where it's maybe it's a heptathlon or something. Um, where she did multiple activities, competing in multiple activities, um, and she made it to the Olympics twice. And so as soon as she said that, you know, my jaw dropped open and I was like, oh, that's amazing. Um, and so we just got to talking and she said something at one point, she said, I have time anxiety. And she said it very quickly. She sort of brushed over it, kind of chuckling at herself as she went, like it was something silly that she had said. And when she said that, I was like, oh my God, I I know what you mean you know, and, and I think I had stopped her because I needed to process that phrase for a second. And I stopped her and I was like, whoa, yeah, time anxiety. Yes, that is a thing, right? And we didn't talk too much about it because we had more stuff that we had to get into since it was our first meeting. And, um, but this morning I was thinking about it because I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you guys about today. And so that was something that came up in my mind was this, this idea of time anxiety and curious if other people are feeling this. I mean, obviously she was feeling this, but I'm curious if it's a more common feeling than I realize because I know that this is something I personally have felt for a really long time. And you know, you have some people out there who they sleep till noon and they, it, they're they totally okay with it, right? They sleep until noon, they sleep until 12, they sleep until 1, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And okay, fine, sometimes this might have to do with depression, but does it always? Maybe it doesn't always have to do with that. And sometimes they are just really aware that their body and their mind needs that much rest. I, my my um, ex-husband, for example, can sleep till noon. Him and his wife, I think, can both do that. And I can't do that. Like, fine, physically, sometimes I can. But as soon as I wake up, I feel like a piece of crap. Like, I feel like I have just wasted so much valuable, potentially very productive time. Even if I get up and I don't end up actually doing very much, like maybe I just sit on the sofa and read for an hour. But for some reason, if I'm sleeping and I wake up late, I feel bad. I feel like I have really wasted this valuable resource. And to the point where it it does give me anxiety, you know, I mean, just the feeling of guilt, that's not a pleasant feeling. But um, I have always, I think since I was in middle school, I have had this sense of urgency of like time is passing and I really need to make the most of it. I need to be, you know, I've also had this thing where I, I have to keep myself busy and that might be, maybe that's an ADHD thing, right? Because I think my daughter is a little bit the same where she just has a lot of energy and she needs to, and she wants to be utilizing that energy. Um, and I think for me too, that's how I was when I was her age. I just, you know, my mind was always going and I needed an outlet for it. I needed it to be busy. Um, but there's always a balance with everything, right? And so I think what ended up happening was that I ended up keeping my mind busy by keeping my body busy, doing you know, a job, playing sports, doing reading or studying or whatever the case was, um, I always filled up every little bit of time that there was. And so I got used to that and created that habit. So then whenever there is time and I'm not using it productively, I feel that guilt or that anxiety, right? That anxiety of like, time is passing so much that if I don't get this done today, you know, I'm, I'm hurting myself. Um, years ago, like 10 to 13 years ago, I was opening a, a new business every year, sometimes more than one business in a year. And while I was rationalizing that, that it was great, you know, I was building my empire. Ultimately, I completely burned myself out from it. 
And I think really what it was coming from is like some sort of a, um, a fear or a, a sense of scarcity where I had to build, 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 because if I didn't, then, you know, everything would crumble or that I would be, you know, left wanting somehow. Like if I did not keep building, if I didn't make things bigger and better, that I would end up regretting it, that I would end up maybe broke with no money or um, nothing to show for myself. Maybe I had to prove myself. So by not doing this stuff, I was nothing. I was nobody. I was not important, right? So all of these things. And so this morning before I started doing this episode, I Googled time anxiety and it actually came up as a disorder. So it's called chronophobia. And let's see, where's the description? The description is it's an extreme fear of time or the passage of time. People with this anxiety disorder feel intense discomfort or dread when they think about time passing them by. They may be concerned about their own mortality or worry about getting older. Some people become obsessed with watching the clock or marking days off the calendar. So I wouldn't say that I am obsessed with watching the clock or marking days off the calendar. If anything, I do watch the clock too much and it it's uncomfortable for me. Um, I, I watch the clock constantly because I always have meetings and I want to make sure that I'm on time or I have to go pick up my daughter, you know, and I understand that the value of being on time is very significant, right? Even if you're just going to brunch with somebody when you are late, which even though I keep my eyes on the clock all the time, I am often late. But um, when you are late, it is showing that you do not value the person that you're going to meet. So I I do have, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would call it an obsession, but I do constantly watch the clock to a point where it's it's uncomfortable. I don't want to be looking at the clock all day long to make sure that I'm not missing something. That gives me anxiety. Uh, I don't mark things off the calendar. I don't enjoy that or I don't feel like, you know, a compulsive need to do so. But I also do look at my calendar frequently and, uh, you know, I just feel like I have to keep track of everything, which again, where is that line, right? Where is that balance between being responsible and then it becoming a point of obsession? Um, yeah, so... So with this person, I don't, you know, we didn't go any deeper into it because it was her first session. We had things to, to other things to talk about. Um, and it didn't seem like it was something that was necessarily holding her back. Obviously she made it to the Olympics twice. So it seems like she, uh, you know, she was doing pretty well for herself. Right. The, the other thing too, that I wonder is how much of this, okay, maybe it's not to the point where it's a phobia, but how much time anxiety is necessary for somebody to be very driven, for somebody to achieve a lot of large goals, right? Like they have to be worried about the time. Otherwise they would just procrastinate. They would just put everything off to the next day, the next day, the next month, the next year, right? And so there's a, there's a part of them that has to feel like, okay, I have to get this done today because the time is important. So then I wonder, and that I feel like that would be a good study right? Like how many high achievers feel time anxiety and to what level, how many of them might actually have chronophobia and how many of them are just, you know, have a healthy respect and observe observation of time. It, it occurs to me too, that I wonder if part of it has to do with social media and how now we you know, there's such high expectations. We hold ourselves to such high expectations because we see all the things that other people are accomplishing. And we also don't see the work and the effort and the time that it took them to do that. So we might underestimate those things. And so maybe we're constantly holding ourselves to these high, high, possibly unrealistic standards where we don't fully, we don't have a full awareness around what it took for the people who have achieved that to get there. Um, 
And so then we're constantly, we feel like we're constantly running or constantly trying to catch up to other people. It also makes me wonder if it might be more apparent for women because we have the quote unquote biological clock, right? Um, I wonder, and these are all things that like, they'd have to be studied. I'm sure there are studies out there, but I wonder even if we're not overly concerned with when we're going to have a baby or when we won't be able to have a baby anymore, how much of that subconsciously affects our anxiety about time, right? Because if you're a woman who knows that you eventually do want to have kids, then you have a timeline, right? Everything that you want to achieve has to be done or you might feel like it has to be done before you have that kid because so often what happens is when you get married, when you have a kid, even if you feel like you're going to have equal responsibility, you and your spouse, oftentimes it's not. And um, oftentimes we get swallowed by our families, right? We get swallowed by the responsibilities that having a family creates. And so then we might have this subconscious feeling that like, okay, we only have a set amount of time here to achieve everything we want. And that gives us anxiety because again, we feel like um, we feel like time is chasing us, right? We feel like it's nipping at our heels. And, um, and we also, I think this subconscious kind of societal belief was created at some point where at a certain point, women's value declines based on youth, based on our ability to have kids, right? And so once all of that happens, then the landscape is totally different. And so again, that might give us some sort of feeling where we have to achieve all of these things before that time happens. I would be curious to compare how many women have time anxiety versus how many men do and see if there's a difference there. Maybe men feel it exactly the same, but I would be very curious about that. It also reminds me of a book that I read by Kate Northrup called Do Less, where she discusses the fact that women are operating on the wrong clock. This is what she says, that instead of being on a 24 hour cycle, which she says is a man's cycle, a man's clock, we should be on a monthly cycle, which obviously has to do with our own personal menstruation cycle. Um, but that instead of planning our days, like in a 24 hour chunk, we should be planning our weeks, you know, the four weeks of the month, we should be planning our lives around that. And then if that is true, it's no wonder that maybe more women feel time anxiety than men because we're living, you know, according to her on the wrong cycle. I don't know. It's just, um, it's just something I've been thinking about because like I said, it's something that I've been dealing with for a really long time. And, and I don't know if I've said this already, um, in this episode, but, um, during COVID I closed and sold most of my businesses, keeping only my audacious founder business coaching company, um, and so since then, I've been trying really hard to give myself time to just sit and be. I don't have to fill up every single minute of the day. I can sit and look out the window and not be listening to a podcast at the same time. Um, I can just sit and drink my coffee without having to read at the same time, right? I don't always have to be multitasking. That time to just sit and recharge is valuable. So um, I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to hear if you feel like you have time anxiety, if you feel like it negatively affects your life in a way, like maybe you get panic attacks or maybe um, you've, you've noticed some kind of obsessive uh, actions that you do that might have to do with this. Uh, or if, if you absolutely don't have time anxiety, if you're just like, no, I have all the time in the world and I'm not worried about anything. I would love to hear that too. Uh, man, I'd love to hear from you if you experience this. So yeah, any insight or any um, opinions you have about this, please send me an email, let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening. And um, I hope to have you back soon for the next episode. Please make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Audacious Founder and um, share this with your friends. If you liked it, give me a five-star rating. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Stay audacious.